right so in the last class yes it's okay isn't it are, are you okay okay because you have the fan now huh? i'm fine okay so the last i think this is the last slide that uh, we were shown in the last class right uh, we were discussing about this slide uh, in this slide what it is is the specific name or species names are not specific okay so that is what it is so these are the species names right as actually these are something called binomial binomial or scientific names of which these are the species name the second part while the first part is the genus name while genus names are very specific while species names the second part is not specific unrelated uh, species could have the same species name in this case it is bicolor in latin it is just that it comprises of two colors two different colors right and mostly most of these binomial or binomial uh, names scientific names have a third part or sometimes it is fourth part there is something called authority and this authority it is not italicized when in print or it is not underlined when you write on a paper for example in handwritten style you are not underlining this part okay the authority so authority is nothing but the person who identified that plan okay so it's not identified but described for the first time okay? so i could simply identify a plant from this campus but i cannot write my name in that species name so that authority is a person who first described the species and he is the authority of describing that particular species so that is what authority is right so most of this uh, biodiversity of the current day uh, including plants and animals or most of them right the commonly occurring plants and animals were all discovered by or described by now it's not a discovery though, right described by carl linnaeus right so that's why most of these have his authority authority is l so it is basically linnaeus okay so that's why this l stands for uh example is here homo sapiens l that linnaeus right so this homo sapiens in latin it means wise man okay so that is what uh, most often though it is it's not a mandatory that this binomial is meaningful words and this word somehow it aid in the taxonomy then it's much more interesting okay so if the words itself the name itself aid in some kind of taxonomy or if this uh, embed some taxonomical or biogeographic information then it is uh, um, it's a lot more useful then simply writing some uh, uh, name uh, for example the name uh, uh, including the person who first described it many of these binomials are like that okay the second part is the name uh, of the person who discovered it that is quite not really useful for the taxonomy taxonomic point of view okay so in this case wise man because wise as in among animals human beings are only you know cognitive ability is much higher for human being that's why maybe that might be a reason for linnaeus to call it as homo sapiens and here in this case ulva paschima so you know paschima you know this is a sanskrit word so i named this one as ulva paschima that's why my name is here past authority is past there so this what, what does that mean this is something to do with its distribution this particular algae is distributed only on the west coast of india so that's why i named it as paschima okay so the naming is very in interesting that it should uh, somehow it should uh, uh, it should aid in identification as well as taxonomical classification okay so otherwise it would be of no use that kind of uh, you know if it is quite ambiguous or if it's numbered for example makes no sense at all right so uh, in this case there are three different animals and of course we all know these are all mammals right so and it also looks similar isn't it somehow it looks similar to me so this of course the first one is giant panda then uh, this is polar bear and then it's grizzly bear right so if you look at that scientific name you know ursus is a common genus so and of course alluropoda is another genus for giant panda so now looking at the genus name you know these two belongs to the same genus that means these two are more a lot more related okay evolutionarily related than this particular that is panda right the normal uh, giant panda isn't it 
so that relatedness you can able to guess from the scientific name itself so that's the one one of the advantage okay so now in this class uh, you know you uh, i uh, i want my students to be aware of at least the national animals and state animals and state plants okay and the scientific names of it so it's nothing but the general knowledge and i want everyone to be aware of at least this okay so you can express some questions about it as well so you know in india we have some of these animals and plants declared as our national animals and national plants national flowers right national tree all those things so you know flower is lotus and of course it is nelumbo nucifera that is a scientific name okay by nomen for the lotus okay? while fruit is mangifera indica of mango right the common name is mango then benin tree is ficus bengalensis okay ficus and that's a very very common genus for angiosperms flowering plants and especially trees in this campus you might have seen that now all the trees in this campus are named you might have seen that right athar singh is taking initiative of naming the uh, trees including the plants right of the herbs and you can see a lot of ficus genus members are there in the campus you might have seen that right so have a look on that and try to memorize the scientific names as well okay so bird is you know pavo cristatus is a scientific name for peacock or p4 then land animal is panthera tigris tigris you know it's a trinomen i told you last class right mostly animals are having trinomen while plants and bacteria are binomial nomenclature okay three parts that is what trinomen means which is nothing but royal bengal tiger right the tiger then aquatic animal which is a mammal in fact that is platanista gangetica river dolphin right again here the second part of the name gangetica is suggestive that it is found in ganges okay river ganges so that's why river dolphin is our thing and now if you look at the state animals and plants for this state punjab you must be knowing this particular bird eastern chanting goshawk so that is our state bird right and the scientific name here it is meliorax polyopterax okay so that is the scientific name for the bird here and then uh, of course the, this one right antelope or black buck that is the state animal here antelope cervicarpa is the scientific name of this and our state tree is the indian rosewood okay dalbergia sisu dalbergia sisu okay it, there is no other trick you just have to memorize these things okay so uh, well you can make a list priority list or prioritization okay so the state animals national uh, birds and national animal then commonly found in your neighborhood and economically important okay so if it's bacteria then pathogenic bacteria and if it's animal animal significant in uh, you know commercially or animal husbandry or domesticated animals all those kind of priority list you can make and memorize it there is no other way no uh you know loop holes to memorizing these scientific names okay so make it a habit right? every day you can try to memorize 10 animals each and review it animals or plants you know and review it every week so that you can pick up a lot more skills on at least to name it right while naming and memorizing these names and identifying it these two are entirely different okay identifying itself is a, a big task for which you need to refer some authoritative books for that Okay, it's only about the naming and memorizing these names. Okay, so now you can see the complete list of all states, that is, state animals and state, uh, you know, other things, right? Birds, so all this biodiversity which is declared as state property, you can access in our website. Okay, go and download that list and try to memorize it. Now, if you see the rules of naming organism, there are several established rules. how to name an organism okay so it depends on what kind of taxonomic group you are naming for example is it a plant or is it an animal or is it a microbial organism uh, the rules are entirely different for all all of these uh, organisms okay for icbn is international council for botanical nomenclature that is for botanists uh, for including algae or, or, or ferns water uh, ferns or aquatic 
plans okay icbn have got an excellent website i'm going to link it and that website say step by step process if you found a new species how to name it okay in a uh, uh, acceptable manner right international council for zoological nomenclature that is for zoologists for animals right including uh, all sets of animal of the uh, we can say it as metazoa okay all metazoan uh, animals that you can uh, name it according to icz and rule then icnb well there are several of these icnb is yet another organization international council for nomenclature of bacteria or bacteriological nomenclature okay so that code and there is a manual called burgess manual burgess manual of systematic bacteriology that manual enlist all this taxonomic uh, you know taxonomy of this microorganism step by step on the burgess manual okay so that also you can have a look now i'm um, uh, just Okay, so that's what. Okay, going to take some time, but I will continue it. So uh, names should be accepted. As of now, what is the criterion for naming an organism? So it has to be accepted in a peer-reviewed international journal. So that's one of the thing, and it could be online only journal, no issue. Right? It has to be a peer-reviewed, and it has to have a wide audience. So that's why even uh, journals that do not have print versions. Okay, so. As of uh, 2013, there are a number of journals that do not have print versions. They have there are only op online only journals, right? Or open access journals. So these journals are also acceptable. Okay. Then traditionally these species descriptions uh, were in Latin. Okay. So if you describe a species, a new species you found, for example, a new plant that you found or a new insect that you found, you have to describe that species, the characteristic and how this species is different from closely related species so that description have to be in latin but as per 2013 amendment of this icbn so in the in in botany right i'm not really aware of zoology and uh, micro because that's not my field that even that latin requirement has been waived off now that you don't really need to say that in latin that's why most of these traditional universities in botany department they have one faculty or one person who is well aware of Latin because writing these descriptions in Latin is a must to describe a new species okay so now that that is not really essential that you can write in English as well no problem for example this is another species of Cladophora okay Rhodolithicola is a new species this person Lilia so he is a authority of the species right uh, spnov means what species novum that means new species okay so you see here diagnosis thallus atroviridis usc add 2 cm altus this is in latin right so then after that this is english diagnosis so latin then english so this is how the the real formal uh, description of a species but now you don't really need this this uh, latin description at all the english itself is uh, sufficient now best names aid in identification as i told you right so the names something have to be do with that identification for example clitoria ternatia so the shape itself is uh, uh, you know resembles of the clitoris so you know for the scientists there is nothing obscene other than scientific misconduct that's very important thing, okay so there is no terms or uh, you know uh, terminology or phrases or whatever the phenomenon there is nothing is obscene but for the scientists the most obscene thing is what scientific misconduct for example you're copying someone else's manuscript cut copy and paste plagiarism or you are absolutely bluffing some experiment that you have never did in your life and writing a new manuscript those things are scientific obscenity okay so this particular plan have you seen that in our campus it is there if you go from here to the canteen on the left side of the turn okay, just have a look okay so that plant is there this is I, somehow the color is bad in the projector it is bright blue in color okay it's a blue 
very nice lovely flower so this is again this is named by whom ninius right that's why this l stands here okay that is the authority here now classification groups you know taxon or taxa is the plural of it it is a category where you are grouping these uh, organisms into okay so taxon it could be genus it could be species it could be uh, much higher taxonomic levels as well or there is a hierarchy of the taxonomic system right i'm sure everybody is known of so now some certain taxa are something called extinct that means they are no more for example most of the dinosaurs are extinct right or mammoth right closest relative of today's what elephant right elephants most uh, closest relative some animal called mammoth okay woolly and mammoth so that mammoth is no more because that is extinct species but elephant is an extinct species so extinct is something which is living taxa okay right so extinct versus extinct i think everybody knows about it right now there is a hierarchy of groups from broadest to most specific can anyone say which is the most specific taxa most specific taxon which is that can you give me some examples of taxa yes yeah absolutely kingdom phylum genus right so if i ask you which is the most specific of this kingdom kingdom is the most broadest or generic Spe specific means species okay so species is the most specific always and the most broadest that right? there is some confusion there mostly it is kingdom but according to some classification scheme even above kingdom there is something called domain of carl woosey classification there is a domain so that could be the broadest one three domain classification right now five kingdom two kingdom all those things right domain kingdom phylum class order family genus species so these are uh, something called taxonomic hierarchy or taxon right so this is how the domain kingdom so this order uh, of course the domain is the broadest taxon while species is the most specific taxon here right so if you look at here also this is again uh, you know uh, different kinds of animals here right all these are metazoans right and if you look at here all these are animals kingdom kingdom animalia you can say or animal kingdom right or metazoa kingdom then phylum here it is all chordata right now the class here it is mammalia so now you can see some animals are getting out of this thing right kingdom animalia to if i come to chordata you can say that this snake this uh, you know no no sea star right the sea star has been disappeared from this level but snakes are there snakes are nothing but reptiles right squamata right now if you look at here now only mammals are here now, all these are mammals while squamata that snake is getting out of here then coming to carnivora so only carnivorous animals are right here the squirrel is not there which is an uh, omnivore all right uh, now if you look at the family ursidae so very much related animals of the uh, you know for of the bear bear animal right that is what the ursidae comes here but panda is part of this ursidae family but coming here to the genus ursus you know it, there is no panda is not actually a bear so that's why while comes the species ursus arctos arctic uh, bear right arctic Uh, uh what is that this is a uh, white bear polar bear right that is why this polar bear found in pole so arctic right or antarctic but mostly it is in arctic right there is a mnemonic as well to remember that but of course you don't really need to remember this mnemonic because this itself is not that a big deal right you can remember the mnemonic here it is dumb king philip came over for a goose berry soup so if you remember this sentence all the first letters of this sentence okay first letters of the words of this sentence dumb stands for d stands for domain then kingdom phylum class order okay family genus and species is it clear 
so that is what if you look at this human being classification here now the thing is that each of this level or these these are called taxonomic ranks or taxa is that clear so each of these taxa have its own taxonomic characteristics or identification characteristics or we can call it diagnostic characteristics so if you want to make a new kingdom of course even these are being revised is not not to the level of kingdom though but even domain level right in 19 uh, 80s the crown or archaea right archaea domain have been constructed but for uh, order and family even these days a new new families are coming up new new orders are coming up especially for bacteria as well as for plants okay so these orders of if if you are making a new order you have to define what is the characteristics of this new order okay so to define that there is some characteristics associated with all this Now you can look at here eukarya of course is cells with nucleus so there is a difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes no nucleus well there are several characteristics just one apparently uh, most easy to remember or easy to identify okay now animalia you know these are multicellular motile okay and ingestion of food well you cannot say motile as a you know strict classification because there are several sessile animals like hydra uh, there are several animals sessile means the, those are not moving okay static coral reef for example these are very static right but still these are animals and multicellular well are there any unicellular animals animal uh, yes yeah unicellular animals Amoeba, see, amoeba. You cannot say these are animals, right? These are a part of these are protozoans, right? Amoeba, uh, Paramecium. You can say these are actually part of uh, another very. There is a number of kingdoms, right? Another kingdom, and mostly these are protozoans. So, well, animals are mostly unicellular, multicellular. I don't. I'm not aware of any unicellular animal. There is a yet another good characteristic feature to define the animals. Okay. Now, phylum Chordata is another phylum which is uh, the characteristic is dorsal supporting rod and nerve cord. So, Chordata, the name itself is coming from this nerve cord and uh, dorsal supporting rod, the mainly our backbone, right? So, these, of course, these characteristics are will not present. persist for the entire life but these are the characteristics in uh, in the embryonic stage okay so that is why these are defined based upon the embryonic stage now mammalia you know hair and mammary glands and of course the name itself coming from mammary glands okay so oviparous and viviparous animals right oviparous egg laying right and viviparous yeah give birth to the offspring and mostly these mammals are viviparous you know right now primates what are they adapted to climb trees the opposable thumb that is good characteristic for the primates they are able to climb the trees that is why that it's an adaptive feature okay so inside primate is hominidae it is adapted to walk erect so all hominidae can able to walk erect or oh, these are bipedals while most of the mammalia or uh, are something or even the chordates almost all chordates you can say these are tetrapod animals except fish right or all, all these chordates are tetrapod that is ancestor had four legs and uh, you know for but if you come here to the hominid level of course we have four limbs but two we call it as hands while two are our legs right So that is what hominid. Then Homo is our genus, man. That is the meaning of Homo in um, Latin, right? Large brain, two limbs. These are some of the characteristics. And if you define, how do you define Homo sapiens? So that is body proportions of mo mo modern humans. So our proportion, the body proportion, that is how we define uh, this Homo sapiens. So basically, all these taxonomic uh, taxa levels, right? So taxonomic ranks. or the categorical taxonomical ranks have 
got its own descriptions okay so characteristics so based on these characteristics so shared characteristics okay so uh, shared characteristics these are exactly we call it as apomorphic okay apomorphic characteristics so synapomorphic character we are going to come up later so these shared characteristics shared characteristics means if this characteristics is if it's shared shared by everybody else this everybody else is shared this characteristic is common for everyone else so that is why these are apomorphic okay so now uh, hierarchy of, of course these are different hierarchy where you can say that right so of course we know that these two are animals while this is is a fungi right it's a mushroom we can say so that's why the difference of these three are actually these two are animal while this is fungi of different kingdom right so the kingdom itself is different here and if you look at these two these two are carnivores we know so that is the nearest common ancestor is a carnivore so up to carnivore for order carnivore these two animals are all same animalia chordata mammalia carnivora see even family is same felidae right and coming to the genus level these two are different this is a lynx cat or lynx rufus and while this is panthera leo okay so lion right so that is what these two are belongs to the same family so i can simply ask you some questions are uh, these two belongs to the same family or same genus or same class or order so you would be able to answer that if i mean uh, those i'm going to ask on only on the common commonly found animals right on our practicals now looking at here these are basically uh, you know five kingdom classification right animalia plantae fungi protista and there is of course there is a uh, uh, monera you can say right of the vitaker's classification scheme okay so but that is for the bacteria right so or prokaryotes you can say so these are all eukaryotic kingdoms okay so even this classification is a bit archaic that we are not following but just for explaining it you know protista the organization is what complex single cell some are multicellular while fungi what these are you know mostly multicellular but few are unicellular right a unicellular form what we call it as yeast right then plantae are multicellular uh, form with specialized complex cells right and then animals again multicellular form with specialized complex cells so these are some of the represented organisms just to give you an uh, overview of the hierarchy now there are several schemes of classification right linnaeus uh, two kingdom of course in, in as per linnaeus it is there are three kingdoms right one is called mineralia minerals were fossils he grouped it but now again we no one is following that classification scheme but as per linnaeus vegetablia and animalia vegetablia means vegetable so uh, plants right and then animals then comes heckel ernst heckel the, the german bi famous biologist of the 20th century protista plantae and animalia then catan to empire so the term empire is of the catan right prokaryota and eukaryota right now this this is uh, something like this classification bacteria archaea eukarya or wuzis eubacteria archaebacteria and uh, eukarya right so this is uh, something similar to that now coming back to copilans 1938 is four kingdom monera protoctista plantae protoctista and animalia so it is basically uh, you know you can say it's only four kingdom because protoctista is same here right now vitaker's five kingdom this is quite common because mostly the nceert syllabus of the our uh, government of india right in plus 2 level we are following the vitaker system but that is actually quite archaic like right? this are uh, this is again this is not very uh, you know it's not modern classification but according to him it's monera for bacteria and all you know protostita proto protista is for all protozoans okay so then plantae fungi and animalia right? then comes carlos so carlos of the us so this this guy have recently been dead the january of this year okay 2013 so whose scheme uh, it is six kingdom his first classification is six kingdom but his second classification it is three domain and this is widely accepted Okay, most of the books are now concentrating on this domain scheme. 
as per the second scheme domains bacteria archaea and eukarya now in 2004 the cavalier smith thomas cavalier smith of oxford university so he came up with six kingdom so that person keeps on changing okay so as of 2004 it's six kingdom classification which is currently the most authoritative classification scheme for uh, you know life on planet earth and of this scheme it is bacteria then protozoa chromista plantae fungi and animalia okay so protozoa and chromista these are some somehow it is more related to protozoans okay so uh, that is why he have divided this protista to protozoa and chromista and otherwise it's all same and if you look at here and especially for the last half of this uh, classification scheme the fact became a lot more apparent that if you know mostly for example carl woos so this woos is an archaeobacteriologist so he is working on archaeobacteria so if you work on certain field so you are a lot more biased towards that field and you want to say that okay so archaeobacteria are the best one okay and it's very very important so the science is not actually looking closer to the field of archaeobacteria and it deserves a lot more attention so let me construct a new domain for archaeobacteria okay so maybe that might have influenced him to make a new domain for archaeobacteria because of the fact that Carl Woos was working on archaeobacteria so he made a new domain archaeobacteria you see that then cavalier smith he was a protozoologist so he is working on protists so according to cavalier smith protists are very important uh, you know group so what he did is that he divided the protist to two kingdom normally it is only one kingdom protista right now it is two kingdom protozoa and chromista so somehow everything is biased that's what my opinion okay so it's very tough to classify the you know the biodiversity on planet earth to the root level if you come to the root of the tree of life it becomes a lot more complicated okay yeah most accepted means i will go for the smith's classification 6 key basically everything is flawed but as of now the most recent classification scheme and which is most adopted worldwide in the, the latest textbooks or latest uh, you know the the paper or the taxonomic papers is the six kingdom classification of the cavalier smith so if if you if you are uh, asked to write an essay on the classification schemes then you should concentrate on the cavalier smith six kingdom classification okay as well as who's is 90 90 three domain classification because that is also a very important classification that is still a gold standard okay the both are actually very important but this is the reason now you know taxons most genera contains number of similar species including extinct species so that's very important in the in the genus that mean doesn't mean that everything is extant some are extinct and some are extant that is living but for example homo is the genus where we belongs to there are a number of extinct species for example homo neanderthalensis homo erectus homo australopithecus right but of all these one only homo sapiens is extant while all others are extinct because these have been disappeared in the course of evolution right while kingdom animalia you know uh, consist of a number of animals we know these are all kingdom animalia and of which the diversity is biased that's very important if you look at the we are going to concentrate on the biodiversity in the end of this course so when we say we we will see a lot more in detail that number if you look at the number of species it is not that every every genus is having almost equal species but the number of species in a genus or in any taxon is highly diverse and highly skewed skewed in the sense now you look at here of the whole uh, you know animals animal group insects are more than half the diversity is more than half insects so a number of species of insects you can see again the problem here is that what is a species so you know it depends on how you define a species right so maybe uh, uh, two or three insects that looks very similar and that could able to reproduce but still now we are grouping under different different species 
so why is it like that is it is it biological species concept or ecological species or evolutionary species concept or phylogenetic concept that we will come up okay so in one of our classes uh, different species concepts right now again the plants here the bryophytes vascular plants consist of that right now the bryophytes are consisting of only 16000 while vascular plants are or pteridophytes right or, or 2 lakh 48000 now algae is 26900 well these are kind of approximations okay these are not accurate numbers now you know the of course the earth is highly diverse right? life on earth is ex extremely diverse so are these absolutely no relation between these animals of this diverse or are these actually related okay these are these originated from one common descent that is a question that 19th century uh, you know biologists were confronted upon where the darwin came in and of course it's not darwin but Linne, uh, you know linnaeus started the whole uh, discussion and then that's all about the evolution that you're going to learn more on your third semester right uh, on the evo devo class now tree of life this is a diagram from the charles darwin's notebook okay so he's a pioneer who first uh, described something called the tree of life the diversity so what according to him you know the essence of his thought is that descent with modification is what it makes the life okay so that is the evolution right the evolution uh, by uh, natural selection right origin of species by natural selection now according to him these species all have a common origin okay so one species led to all diversity of the planet earth so everything is related and this relationship between uh, different animal groups can be illustrated in a tree form so this is how the tree looks like so according to his you know handwritten thing and if you look read this one so what he says is nothing but b and c are a lot more related than b and a a and B are a lot more because in, you know looking at the tree you know that A and B are not very close part right and then D and B are uh, more related than B and C well B and C are a lot more related okay so so that is what the tree of life so I think this was see that the way he illustrates in his notebook it's very interesting isn't it so that is why now the tree of life is a project to catalog the entire biodiversity in a tree form so that means portraying the evolutionary relationship between these biological uh, organisms okay organisms on our planet so tree of life t-o-l that's a project it's a it is the the, the contents of this t-o-l are available in the internet i have already linked in our course website so you can access and you can click on the tree it keeps on expanding the nodes okay so that is what and these you know the node we call right these are these are node and these branching points are speciation events a new species is forming at these nodes right these species have changed to these two species while this have changed to these two species so these nodes represent speciation events and that these tips represent what are these tips tips or leaf leaf represent the species current species or extant species because some tips have been lost here these are the tips which are no more available these are extant and uh, these extinct in fact right and while these tips are extant species that is currently uh, you can see those things right now traditional taxonomy versus cladistics there is a term called cladistics what it is so it is based on evolution relationship between living organism so it is not simply clustering together okay so Linnaeus in his classification he simply uh, you know clustering what he thinks these are related okay so that is called phonetic clustering or phenology well cladistics there is a, a process of evolution is also taken in consideration for cladistic uh, taxonomy okay so evolution what is evolution you know it is a change in populations uh, you know gene frequency or allele frequency over time due to the environmental effects right so change in allelic frequency in a population over time is what you call evolution okay. so that is what the the cladistics is a lot more based upon the evolution evolutionary processes than the traditional taxonomy or 
phenetic taxon okay so it is similar features to group organisms together into taxonomic group similar taxonomic groups based upon the similarity while cladistics it is dealing with shared features features shared by uh, different organisms okay so these shared features are uh, apomorphic characteristics that is why the cladistics is a lot more based upon so uh, group organisms by common ancestry so if you are grouping in cladistics two organism two have same ancestor so and it is descended okay same ancestor these two are descended from that ancestor so that is what the cladistics is right so if you look at here this is a traditional taxonomy animalia right chordata all these are chordates rept this is a reptile right squamata now this is apes and this is reptile again right so if you look at here it is a little bit confused what is this reptile apes and reptile so that means these two are a lot more related than apes but if you look at here it becomes again there is a lot of confusion here t rex this is a tyrannosaurus rex is a extinct species okay and now you see the parrot these two forms of one clade these two are a lot more related than this caiman or uh, you know crocodile crocodile and caiman is the american term is caiman okay so that is what but again this confusion makes it result to this entire group called sauropsida okay so reptile plus bird is called sauropsida because bird is part of reptile this entire group is called reptiles so parrot is a kind of a reptile only there is no difference between a bird and a reptile in phylogenetics that we are going to come up later don't worry about it but this is a difference here this is what you call as phenetic uh, this is called cla cladistic grouping or it's a cladogram okay so while this is phenogram or you know phenetic clustering or traditional taxonomy okay so simple clustering related groups together is the uh, you know the sphere of the traditional taxonomy is that clear any questions fine all right then thank you